Alrighty, this is not what you'd expect to see in Central Australia. Obviously we've had a lot of summer rains come down and we've got all the awesome wildlife that comes out with it. There's three different species of frogs in this area. There's a desert spadefoot toad, there's a Spencer's spadefoot frog, there's also a Maine's frog which lives out here. So there's heaps of tadpoles and we're looking for triops, a crustacean which lives out here. He's a trilobite and he's also known as a shield shrimp. When we get these summer rains, they'll actually come out and hatch and reproduce and feed, and then they'll lay their eggs for the next season. Hopefully we can find some of those to show you as well. Let's go and see what we can find. One here, a couple little triops. Shield shrimps, and they're really interesting little critters. They're prehistoric. Their fossils date back 300 million years. And what happens is their eggs lay dormant right throughout the dry season and the summer. And the ground can actually get to 80 degrees and the eggs still survive. And then when it rains, they'll hatch out and they'll reproduce and feed. They can live for up to 90 days and they reproduce. They're an arthropod and they're a freshwater crustacean. Now the name triops, tri meaning three and ops meaning eye. They've actually got three, three eyes. They've got a simple eye, which is in the middle and then they've got two other eyes either side. Prehistoric little critters, aren't they awesome? Everything that hatches out here or comes to life with this rain and, and with the wet weather has to breed and feed quite fast because once the water dries up, obviously they all die. So some of the species of, of the frogs out here and the spadefoot toads, the eggs can hatch and metamorphosize into little toadlets or little froglets in about three to four weeks. So very quick, in these ponds they'll eat anything that they can get. Uh, a lot of the plant matter will start to decompose and the tadpoles and toad poles will feed on that. They'll become carnivorous if they have to as well, and they will eat each other. So whatever's going is on the menu as only the strong survive out in these areas. In these remote pools, anything's fair game, and a dead shield shrimp is a good opportunity for a tadpole to have a feed. They'll also eat decomposing matter, such as the plants and grasses, which may be in the water as well, as algae forms. Tadpoles will also eat that. Now we've got a shield shrimp and a tadpole, and there's that demonstration of cannibalism right there. You can also see we've got little nymph shrimps cruising around, sea monkeys, another type of little crustacean that lives out here. And we can find some other dragonfly nymphs as well. Well, this is certainly not the weather you would expect to see when you come to the central western desert areas of Australia. And a couple of times a year, it can actually get a lot of water out here like this. We've got some clay pans here which are holding the water. We've also still got a fair bit of rain around, as you can see that storm in the background. Now, it's interesting weather patterns. We can catch the tail end of the southern winters around June and July and get uh, rain from there. And then around December, January, you can also catch the tailwinds of some of the monsoons or tropical depressions, which will also push rain into central Australia. Of course, this changes the habitat and all of these interesting species come out. There's a tiny little desert spadefoot toadlet down there. He's probably about three weeks old, little fella. And just to give you a bit of an idea of how big he actually is, it's about the size of my fingernail. Well, it's time to have a look at what these little guys look like underwater when they're doing their thing.
never know what you're going to find out in the bush. Yeah.